My name is Rusty. I don't think it is. Are you sure? No, I haven't seen the certificate. Oh, me neither. Uh, Hello, everybody. It's been a while. It's been quite a quite a minute. Um, This is Bliss Point, a podcast that records sometimes on Wednesdays. Today is Wednesday, July eighteenth, and this is episode eleven of Bliss Point, a podcast and website serving up music discussion, news, show and album reviews, and more. My name is Jordan Kaufman. And I'm joined by my lovely co-hosts, Billy Gatewood. Hello. And Paul Kolb. Good evening. Hello. And or day. I, uh, it's been, I think, a month. Yeah. <laughs> Almost since since we last recorded, so we have a lot to catch up on. There's a lot of cool stuff that happened, and a lot of shitty stuff. Um, speaking of shitty stuff, This Is America was apparently stolen. Allegedly. <laughs> so we've heard. One of those um, chord progression thieves. Yeah, so a rapper by the name of Jace Harley um, wrote a song called American Pharaoh that came out a year or so ago, maybe maybe a little more than that, uh, that uh, upon listening uh, has no, I, I guess, what's, what's the term, musical similarities between the two tracks. This is America by Childish Gambino and American Pharaoh by Jace Harley. Um, there is a similar, like, sub oh yeah they, quality they to it similar frequency ranges yeah um and <laughs> someone someone on twitter i think or maybe it was the needle drop pointed out that like if we're getting into the territory of like copywriting vibes like at, at that point we're, we're just kind of done as a music writing populace like should vibraphone players not be protected <laughs> <laughs> no, the metaphorical vibe. Oh. Um, the metaphorical vibe. The groove, um, as it were. Um, and in this same lineage, um, recently, uh, Ed Sheeran's having a bad time. Uh, he was sued for $100 million by the Marvin Gaye estate uh, for copyright infringement all in Shape of You. Um, and he also lost the royalties to... Uh, I forget. Hasn't lost, just hasn't got. Sorry, yet. yes, sorry. So uh, let's start with I the Marvin Gaye shit. Yeah, okay. Start with the Marvin Gaye shit. Why um, doesn't this shit happen to punk bands? Is it because they don't have Ed Sheeran money? It's, That's it. It's Ed Sheeran money, and everybody's after it. Yeah, it's true. Uh, poor little ginger boy is so rich; he doesn't know what to do with himself. Um, <laughs> but they Ed Sheeran's being sued for a hundred million dollars by Marvin Gaye State on the grounds that Shape of You copies. Uh, let's get it on in a substantive fashion. Um, and I, we listened to both, or no, not listen to both. We listened to a video explaining kind of why the lawsuit's dumb. Um, I, I kind of, I know how I feel. I assume you guys feel similarly, but I'm not sure. What are, you, what are your thoughts? I mean, it comes right down to what Paul said. You can't copyright a chord progression. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I, I feel like there has to be a lot of similarity before we start accusing people of this kind of stuff. Do you remember that uh, that Joe Satriani deal? Yeah, Who with Coldplay. The, Coldplay, yeah. yeah. In that case, there was actually a melody that was very similar yes, to the guitar melody absolutely. for his track. Absolutely. But you know, like Billy said, the chord progression thing, it's math. There's, yeah. there's only but so many it's, notes that and work in so many combinations. <laughs> it's funny that this is coming Western up music. today. I don't know if you noticed. We can get into it later, but... One of the songs on your new release this week, Paul, sounds very, very similar to Knockin' on Heaven's Shut Door. your mouth. It's like the same chord progression. <laughs> Do we ever talk but about that? No, no, we're I have not. the exact no. same thought. Um, Are we talking about Lizzo later? Uh, I mean, we, we can. We cut that, right? Yeah. No, because like, that same deal. Like, it sounds oh, just yes. like Justin oh, the, Timberlake. Yeah, the bass line I mean, on her yeah. new song. Uh, and I would Boys, say that yeah. replicates Justin Timberlake more than any of these tracks yeah. that are getting sued replicate anything. It, I honestly I understand why copyright infringement is there, uh, especially for music, because uh, you don't want somebody just blatantly ripping off something. But as a big fan of like remix culture and hip hop and reusing old stuff, like I kind of would be fine with none of it being a thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's it's kind of stupid um yeah i mean prop intellectual property is a big deal sure but where do you draw that line yeah who defines it yeah it's it's complicated and beyond my means of understanding um and uh we'll just leave it to that it's real dumb um so kanye west uh coming off a hot month 
of really, really, really good music, at least in my opinion. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> that was a sweet chortle, Billy. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to hear his thoughts on this. Billy disagrees. Um, and he also disagrees with his, his partner in crime that we're about to talk about. Kanye and Chance the Rapper collaborating on a allegedly seven song album so similar in the vein of everything that kanye's been producing uh, in the last couple weeks or last month month and a half um and i couldn't be more excited i love chance um i am very interested to see what he can do with kanye's new style of production i don't know if they match up honestly i think they do you think so i think i'm in that boat with you I think we can wave to Billy as we paddle away from the shore. <laughs> Look, I, if Kanye <laughs> stuck to just producing other people's albums, sure. I would be 1,000% okay with that because that Pusha T album is incredible. Yes. And I don't know where that style... like. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's funny you say that because if you think about it, look at Chance's style and then look at Kanye's trajectory where his production's getting less glossy mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. getting a little more stripped down. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it could. Oh, yes. I definitely think it's going to sound just like Kid See Ghost, and you won't even be able. It's just going to be a follow up to that. I've been warming I'm, on that. I mean, really. When I we recorded love that album right after so it came good. out, yeah. you know, I was a little lukewarm on it, but the more I listen to it, it's kind of. I don't know what else I would expect from him, Cody. Ugh, it's the best. I don't like either his solo Billy, or that one. Billy, you're wrong. It's fine. Um, and I was so excited. <laughs> I was so excited. I had put everything into that. <laughs> so. In after the news came out that he was supposed to be recording with Kanye, he gave an interview this week uh, stating that his new record is supposed to come out this week. Um, and a friend pointed out to me that he makes no reference to the fact that this is the Kanye album that's supposed to come out this week. So he apparently has two things in the work uh, in the works, which could be very interesting. Um, and then he tweeted a couple of days later stating that the album is not coming out this week, but he dropped a couple of new songs. Um, so I have not listened to them yet, but I'm very excited. People are to doing check them too out. much. Very true. Uh, he also, in one of the new songs, he <laughs> talks about how he bought a Chicago publication. So, like, dude is, like, doing everything. Um, so it's, it's no wonder that he hasn't written an album in, I think, two or three years. Like, I'm going to hate on Drake for putting out a 25-song album. Kanye's basically doing the same thing. I it's mean, just in four parts. Let's, mm, with different, uh, mm. Instead of just having a bunch of features, it's like full-on projects with people. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, speaking of Drake. Oh, it? Speaking of Drake. Wonderful segue, Billy. Thank you. Um, so, Drake's new album, Scorpion, uh, is not good, uh, if you weren't <laughs> aware. But the he came out uh, a couple weeks ago, I think beginning of July, maybe end of June. Um, obviously broke all Spotify streaming records because everyone in the world who has Spotify or any music service loves Drake. Um, so he's like number one streaming music of all time. Um, and Spotify kind of gets caught, um, with making all of their playlists Drake related in some fashion. Um, so there's two sides to this story. There's the users who wanted Drake went to the playlist section, saw Drake on the playlist, like, album art or whatever, and they open up the playlist and he's not in there. And then you have the people that don't want Drake and are listening to things unrelated to Drake to avoid Drake and have found that Drake was on those playlists anyways. Um, So Spotify is kind of in some hot water. They said, you know, obviously this wasn't intentional, blah, 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 and then users were asking for refunds. Which is kind of insane to me. I don't think so. It's really difficult to find a Drake playlist on Spotify. <laughs> the, the fact that you can ask for a refund of a month of a music service makes no sense. Yeah. Like, I like I, I know you're making a joke, but like, do you have? Does anyone that listens to Spotify or uses Spotify to listen to things not listen to anything else but Drake? Like, could you not just remove yourself from the situation for like? a week until they sort things out like i as as annoying as it sounds to have him be all over everything like i don't understand why it's that big a deal right like it's hey if you're listening to a playlist and you can't read it's probably a big deal <laughs> yeah, very true <laughs> how did i get here or like you're operating a computer without a monitor it's probably a really big <laughs> maybe deal. that's what it was um if you're using your ipod shuffle yeah. so uh 
Down down with Spotify, I guess. Who, who knows? Wow. I'm just going to have any I'm just gonna streaming ride. services yeah. anymore. Yeah, download yeah. it and then go listen I'm to gonna the download, our playlist. I'm going to buy all my music and then have it taken away <laughs> when I realize that I don't own any of my music right. in 20 years. Um, so speaking of not owning your music, um, minus the bear calling it quits. That segue has nothing to do with this. <laughs> minus, I was about to be like, <laughs> wow, we've seminal, gotten really good. Seminal math, emo, punk, pop band whatever whatever you want to call them minus the bear uh after 17 years is calling it quits which is kind of nuts that is i had no idea they had, they'd been around for forever but putting yeah. it back to 2001 really I'm, makes you realize I how i kind old of they took are. them for granted yeah because like i've never been like i've never gotten like on a like i only listen to minus the bear for like a month kind of kick they've just always been there and like this is really good i should mm-hmm. listen to more minus the bear and then never do and then, right um but they're finally calling it quits um they're releasing a new ep uh think the end of the summer uh and they're going on a farewell tour so um i really have to credit them for kind of getting me into math rock right um, yeah which will come into play later um as we discuss our albums of the week but um just really neat band and kind of I'm happy for them to have have had their career be this long mm-hmm. and be this successful. Be able um, to call it quits on their own terms. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very cool. Um, and with that, end of news, we're going to get into what we've been listening to. Okay. And that includes the best, worst, good, noteworthy, mediocre, important, and consequential, sometimes album-related shows, singles, and new releases of the week. And for shows, we have... Um, I feel like... I was there based on the amount of Snapchats that I got. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Billy Saw, Taking Back Sunday, and Coheed and Cambria at the MECU Pavilion That's right. in Baltimore. What does it used to be right. called? Uh, Pier 6. Pier 6. Yeah. Okay. Is it outdoors? It is an outdoor venue. Um, is it on the water? Literally on Pier 6. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Uh, it was very cool and way smaller than we expected. Sure. We're expecting, you know, like a Jiffy Lube amphitheater yeah. type uh, size, and it is not. It is if very it's small. on the water, how does the sound not carry oh, it does. everywhere? Okay. It does. Because I don't think I've, I guess I haven't been downtown when there was a show at p right. Six. Or it's, if I was there, I was yeah. inside a venue. It's, it's closer to Fells Point. It's not necessarily next to uh, Oh, Harbor. okay. So it's not, okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. it's along the same stretch. Just sure. Further down. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, is the venue good? Yeah, it was fine. Okay. Um, I, as far as outdoor yeah, venues I mean, go, it was, yeah, it exactly. terrible. I it mean, sounded pretty good. Yeah, via snaps. So. Uh, but with my my buddy Danny, uh, we ended up getting really good seats, pretty close up. Um, and with that, I mean, the sound was was way better than yeah. I expected. Yeah, it was pretty um, pretty clear. Yeah, uh, it's especially like via phone i was kind of surprised yeah yeah at how well it came through yeah so. they uh, did a really good job with mixing and production on that on the tour good. and it was incredible and nostalgic really um i'm i'm very happy to see that taking mix on a opened yeah coheed yeah because well it's a co it be. but yes they oh, played okay first. okay they both sure. played for the exact same amount of time okay but they did play first was there an opener um the story so far who i'm not too too familiar with or kind of i guess uh Oh, I'm thinking kind of story of, pop of punk. the year. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Okay. It's kind of like pop okay. punkish. Um, so Coheed's the odd man out on yeah. the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And, and, the, and the crowd base was primarily there for Coheed. Really? Or at least like shirts and merch wise. So like, like dirty neck beards suffering through pop punk for like... No, everybody... I, well, so You're kind of into it? It, it? Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody was into the entire thing. Okay. It was, it was equal in the sense of like enjoyment and excitement. Oh, that's good. But just looking around, everybody had a Coheed shirt sure. on. Sure. But also, I mean, everybody sings every word to take back Sunday, right. because how can you but, not, if you know, yeah. you know. Yeah, I can answer that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they were all there. I mean, it was it was just, for most emo kids, just like a dream yeah. co-headlining summer tour. Um, literally, just before we started recording, um, Danny texted me out of the blue and just said, Sunday was incredible, wasn't it? <laughs> like, he's still just, like, he's nostalgically, yeah. like, reminiscing on it. Um, so and I, it was. It was... They played... All the best nostalgic stuff that you could want. They being of, both bands? Both bands. Okay, that's good. They both played everything that you could ask for out of an hour and 15 minute set from both of them. This stage in their career, doing a co-headlining right. summer tour, you got everything you wanted. That surprises me, considering... 
like the main reason I didn't go was because um I mean I I love Kohita way more than I love Taking Back Sunday. Um their new stuff hasn't been the best. You I'm excited for their their new album. You would have um, loved it. So I of course I'm excited for oh, that. Gosh. Um and Taking Back Sunday I like their two albums that everybody knows and yeah, then tell I all your like friends and where you want to be. The, well See, I yeah. like I got into Taking Back Sunday at like where you want to be. Oh. So Tell All Your Friends was like a little too lo fi for me. Okay. So I liked I still like uh Where You Wanna Be in Louder Now Louder a lot. Now. Mm-hmm. Um and then everything else after that was just kind of yeah. straight garbage. Which they don't play. Okay. They play that's good. I'm glad ninety seven percent of their they're, stuff. They're pulling was a good Charlotte. They recognize of, their yeah. audience. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's what they they knew what that's that tour was meant to be. Okay. Um cool. That's they really nailed good. it. They I'm nailed glad it. you it was, enjoyed yourself. I am so glad I went. That's good. I'm I'm very happy for you. Um, okay, singles. We have a million singles that came out. Dude, um, so many good things to talk about. Uh, and we're just kind of run going to run through the gamut. Um, maybe stop off at some extra good ones. Um, but this new Meek Mill track, "Stay Woke," uh, was really surprising to me. Uh, are you guys big Meek Mill fans? I wouldn't say big. But I don't know if anyone's a big no, Meek Mill no. fan. But, but this, this track got my attention a yeah, little bit. Absolutely, yeah. They, for, like, he's obviously known and made fun of for his, like, yelling, shouting, rapping style. But it, it actually sounds at home on this piece. Yeah, it's and much it, more heartfelt. It's a, and kinda... like a, I hate saying it, but it's, it's like that uh, kind of uh, ethereal, like, conscious rap production. Mm-hmm. And it's... It's obviously about living on the streets of Philadelphia and <laughs> how sh- bad shit can be sometimes. But it's a very good track. Miguel Feature is spot yes, on, yes, too. Yes, He's yes, so good absolutely. Yeah, I forgot that he was on there um, until the video popped up. I was yeah. like, oh, shit, I forgot. Um, so, yes, very, very good. Check it out. Uh, new Charlie XCX uh, released two singles, uh, Focus, which kind of repetitive, wasn't eh. a huge fan of, uh, and No Angel, which is... Um, Eh. In line, you didn't like it. <laughs> did you like it, Paul? It was okay. Okay. I, uh... Oh, you did say that you needed you needed a little bit more to kind mm-hmm. of be on the the XCX train, right? So I, I'm excited to see what she does next. I've liked her most recent output a lot. Um, everything past you know, boom clap, all that's it's when hard she started for me to, to get where out she's production. at. She doesn't do follow any sort of like, which is kind of why I like, love her, and I get that. Yeah. Like she doesn't have her own brand, except for her brand is to just try whatever she wants to try. Yep, absolutely, I, it's neat that we have a. I don't know how major she is now, mm-hmm. considering Boom Clap was so long ago. Right. Um, but it's it's neat that we have a a pretty big player in pretty big name in the pop scene mm-hmm. as far as like radio play goes, and she's able to kind of do whatever she wants. Yeah, um, so it's pretty neat. Um, Code Orange, uh, yes, grimy, Ooh. thick, disgusting um, metal. Uh, two tracks, three knives, uh, which I liked the better of the two. I like that um, one a lot. And the Hunt featuring Corey Taylor of Slipknot, um, which has really cool like synths on it, which I thought was neat. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys into both? Like, like one the more first than the other one was really three good. Knives. Yeah, just because it, it was super brutal. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I like the pace of it. It's so short. Yeah, it's only two minutes, and it. I I really liked. We talked a little bit about the production and how it's it's it very it fits them very well without being super lo fi, but it's and it, it's very very full and very dark and like sludgy yeah. and. The drums aren't like overpowering with like blast beats or no, anything. No, it's, it's the guitar that really yeah, takes the front, yeah. which it's is a, awesome. And we were listening to it right after we were sampling some of that. Uh, it was a hardcore band of some sort. It had really kind of oh, slick production. Uh, North Lane, right? Yeah. And so you had made the comments on that, and I'm sure we'll get to it. Yeah. It was just really kind of sterile sounding. Sure. And when you put something like that next to it, yeah. you really see they definitely clash. Um, let's let's just talk about it. Uh, North Lane Vultures, um, which. I was hesitant going into it because it starts out kind of like a typical metalcore, kind mm-hmm. of like the Bless the Fall stuff yeah, yeah. that we checked out a couple months ago. Um, but I really liked it. I thought the production is a little dirtier yeah. than I was expecting. Uh, they've always been pretty hit or miss for me, but this one definitely stood out. The vocals reminded me a lot of the dude from Norma Jean back yes, in the day. Yes, absolutely. Kind of like 
grimy like 2007 he's, got, he's like, very like thick presence yeah, and right? he's screaming mm-hmm. which is awesome yeah um and this the the keys on it i think were pretty cool too yeah like that cool i like just the basic goth. metal guitar riffing on it yeah it's it's pretty good uh i'm with you like hearing code orange and north lane back to back it was like a stark contrast yeah, like, it's, mm-hmm. it's not even good or bad it's a preference thing yeah absolutely yeah absolutely um next track igloo ghost night racer um one of my favorites from last year up and comer uh, electronic producer signed to flying lotus's record label um very oh. glitchy very weird what do you guys weird. think i mean it's it got really good potential parts to it i um, saw you kind of losing interest yeah. until it like actually found a footing and yeah, became right. a real song it like has that 2 minute like build up to yeah. a drop but it goes in and then out and in and out and then it, when it gets to that drop it doesn't actually drop which it's i which unexpected. i like yeah like i like the difference there but it was just kind of it's so glitchy that and very acid house like yes. it just kind of threw me off it's very very maximalist mm-hmm. like there's the dude is is i shouldn't say maximalist it's more textured and it, it's very, very deeply textured yes. in that there's a million mm-hmm. things complex. going on yeah. at any one time, and it's constantly switching and changing. Um, very I, cool. I liked it a lot. It's the main thing I'm looking for with electronic musicians a lot of time is just something to set it apart. Yeah, just something stylistic that's different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this Rome Fortune track, Hoodrich Disco. Um, uh, the best part about it is obviously the production by Toro Iwa. Uh The beat or instrumental, whatever you want to call it, completely overpowers uh, poor Rome Fortune. But the track is awesome because of the instrumental. Oh, yeah. The pr- production on that is just so good. It's yeah. such standard Toro Iwa, Like Probably it has to be one of his best inter- instrumental Absolutely. pieces that he's done in a long time. And I, as much as I've heard good things about him this is the type of track that I've always wanted to hear from him mm-hmm. and wanted to hear more of. Yeah. And then every time I listen to his solo stuff, I'm like, where is this stuff? Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. he's all over the place. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, very good track. And his voice, I think, has to fit kind of a specific style of production sure. that he has to kind yeah. of cater to. Absolutely. And he seems very particular mm-hmm. about his sense of style and everything. Yeah. So it makes sense. Vocal feature is not that great, though. <laughs> Or you mean you mean the I mean, person whose track it is? You know, that dude. <laughs> yeah. Dude it was that... pretty basic. It was pretty basic, um, for sure. But it was good. Uh new Brockhampton track. Um they released two tracks. Um nineteen ninety nine Wildfire is my personal favorite of the two. Uh and is getting me obviously excited for their new stuff. Um but I'm a huge fan. I kinda wanna know what you guys thought. They're getting traction with me. I mean, you talked them up a little bit over yeah. the years, and I just didn't didn't really click with me. Sure, I didn't pay much attention, but those two tracks, I think I'm on board. Yeah, they're they're fun. I think they're... they managed to set themselves apart, which is very helpful in today's young and up and coming hip hop. So, and especially when you have a group like that that has a lot of members. It's nice that you can actually hear a verse and pick out specifically who it is. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it seems like that would be kind of a normal no, thing yeah, anyway. I'm but with you. Yeah, you can really tell who's voice They are all very, very distinctive yeah. uh, and all very talented. So very excited for that new album. Um, new Metric, uh, which has words have not been said in a long time. Right. Um, I don't know when the last time they put something out. Uh, but Dark Saturday um, by Metric. Um, it seems very still metric yeah that's um, exactly what i was gonna say is they're still making music <laughs> that sounds just like they did yeah. and years it, ago the i think the thing that's most surprising to me is that that sound just reminds me so much of when they were popular and right. like that like scott pilgrim era of mm-hmm. like when they were getting pretty not gigantic but they were still yeah, pretty big. big they were yeah, on the yeah. radio mm-hmm. um and I was wondering if their sound would hold up in today's kind of marketplace. And I think it does. Yeah. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, it's nice to hear a group sticking to their guns. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it's normal that a lot of these different musicians would develop a different sound over time. Yeah. And I think people attribute it to selling out and all that bullshit, which I think is usually unwarranted. But it's nice to see somebody maintain a style. Yeah. And it 
it seems fresh enough. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's difficult to do. It is. You know? Especially, I don't know how long they've been together, but, like, at be least like minus the barrel. Or two. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. They're, I mean, they were around when we were in high school, middle school. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. they've been around a long time. So to keep it fresh still is, is impressive. Um, new Ariana Grande track, uh, God is Woman. I'm glad we checked this out on Paul's recommendation. Uh, the video is very neat. Uh, it's got a lot of cool effects. Um, definitely that one scene that is a callback to Humble for sure. Oh, my God, yeah. Um, and very... Very sexy, very Ariana Grande. I mean, it's a woman empowerment anthem. Um, and it's, it's, Trex kind of surprised me at how good it was. Yeah, it's real solid. It's a good pop track. Like, uh, I don't know. Do you guys like the one that's on the radio now? Um, uh, no More Tears, Left to Cry? Not familiar. Nah, okay. Not it's, <laughs> it's okay. Um, Sing it for us. <laughs> Do a music podcast? No, we have no. no idea what's on the radio. Um, I think that's fine. <laughs> um but yeah, this track is very good. Uh, I was surprised at how much I liked it. Your boys, Billy. There we Your go. Your boys. They're back. Uh, the Midnight, uh, who we discussed a month or two ago. Yeah, we try to talk about it. I try to squeeze them in every episode if <laughs> yeah. I can. Yeah, where you can. Uh, new track, Lost Boy, um, which is still very much them. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you're more familiar with them than we are. Um, but uh, I, I liked it quite a bit. I, I think the vocals were very nice. Yeah, yeah, which um, I don't remember too much, but really, you could speak I, to yeah, that yeah. more than I would. Um, I mean, going forward, they've kind of announced that like the one major change they've made is they're taking out the sax and they're kind of just keeping it instrumental, which is not instrumental, but like they're keeping it to more basic production. Sure, uh, and you can tell that that's kind of where they went on this track. It it's very stru- structured like a song, yeah, um, just like your basic like three and a half minute long song and follows this nice progression and the vocals on it are really solid it's super emo which i mean yeah, it's good one of my favorite qualities about them <laughs> absolutely got a nice little synth solo yeah, at the end it's good yeah that synth solo uh reminded me so much of daft punk yeah like, it's it's a good track i like it um i surprise of this week honestly <laughs> and i'm so glad that we watched the music video for it if you haven't i don't know who who would have seen it because i'd never heard of them before yeah. um but Band is Gunship. The uh, video, or the song, rather, is Dark All Day. And the music video is fucking bonkers. Which I had not even seen until we just watched. Vampire-based and has callbacks to, uh, what's that Tarantino movie that we were talking about? Uh, Dust to Dawn. Uh, From Dust to Dawn, Dawn, yeah. And Blade, and like... Yeah, all kinds of vampire stuff. It's fucking wild. And then there's a... I'm actually I don't want to spoil it yeah. in case you it, actually want to watch so it. It's so weird. But it's like it felt very like oh this is just another like 80s kind of synth again dark synth yeah. kind of band. The, yeah. But then like these heavy heavy goth industrial synth bass right? lines come in and it's nuts. Yeah. Like it's it's very dark in a way that I'm very excited for. And unlike the midnight they took the sax to the that a whole other level. Like the, it's yeah. absolutely consistent throughout the direction. Direction. And you tell that jacked sax player that sax isn't cool. Oh my god. And who is he? Um, he shit, I, from, I forget his he name. He is a, this um, famous sax player yeah, for he, uh, was famously Tina Turner known for playing saxophone was, for yeah. Tina Turner. Yeah. Which is insane. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. Very, very cool. Um, two new childish gaming no tracks. Uh, yeah. Feels like summer I thought was the better of the two. Um, Summertime Magic, I think, is the other one. Uh, honestly, both just kind of throwaways. Yeah, I agree. Especially coming off of This Is America. Like, I don't know if... I, I hope that these aren't on the new album. I'm surprised they didn't take a little bit more time. Considering to... the name of them and right. how short they are and how quick of a turnaround it was between... Well, we don't know how long these have been in the can. No, but you um, put out this massive statement song that... Gained so much attention. It was viral. Went viral. Yeah. And then you put out these two just like little ditty like summer pop songs. And yeah. it's just... They can't all be bangers, but these, no. they're not. They just weren't what I was expecting though. to follow yeah. up with. I, and I usually like him singing on stuff. Like I feel like I'm one of the only people or one of the few people that enjoys his singing, um, especially when it's just like an R&B track from mm-hmm. him. But these are just not, not great. Um, For what it's worth, I didn't really like them until that more recent one anyway like oh yeah his rap albums are all right yeah no i'm He's i'm with you hip-hop but those albums have not aged well um no, it, so yeah. it's 
as he's gotten more diverse, I think he's gotten much better. So here's hoping. Um, and honestly, this could also be my surprise of the week as well. Um, new Death Cab for Cutie track. Yes. I dreamt we spoke again. Um, Billy consistently the only one that is still very excited for their new stuff. Always. Um, Paul and I are still hard to win over. Um, Paul, what do you think? I liked it. I've been trying to keep a more open mind about new Death sure. Cab. I'm not, you know, I was joking last last time we recorded. I'm, it's not that I think every, I only like their depressing tracks. I just, I mean, it's kind of... there's a flavor. There's a sound <laughs> yeah. I'm looking yeah, for. I'm with you. I'm but with you. objectively, this is pretty good. And I think that it is uh, starting to harp on that side of me that loved their old stuff so much. Like the detuned keys and like the that chorus, very weird, riff. like kind of darker direction that mm-hmm. this song goes in. Uh, definitely reminds me of their older stuff, while keeping it very new for them. Yeah. So I'm tentatively excited <laughs> for this new album. I'd say we that's two see. good, two good singles so far. With. Yeah. Did we tell you that? Um, did we? Um, did Sarah and I um, tell you that we heard Gold Rush on DC 101? I don't. It's a local you. alternative yeah, yeah, rock station. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like, "Holy shit! They're they're on the radio! Like this is wild!" Yeah, I so, I will possess your heart was on DC 101. That's for true. A long that's time. true. Yeah. yeah, not the seven minute long version of it, <laughs> yeah, but the the quick quickie. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of lot of good stuff this week. Um, and speaking of, well, mostly good stuff. Um, new releases. Um, so first up in new releases, we got Billy. All right. Uh, with the ever important lesson in comma usage, I'm all ears by Let's Eat Grandma. Not Let's Eat Comma Grandma. No, Let's Eat Grandma. Let's Eat Grandma. Let's fucking eat Grandma. <laughs> grandma, you're going to die. Anyways, uh, tell me, tell me what you thought. <laughs> Which we kind of talked about a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I, I'm curious to see what you thought of uh, this. I hadn't heard about them until this album. Like I guess they put out Neither their first I. album, if, you know, several, a couple of years ago, a few years ago. I don't know what it is, but they've progressed a lot, of, apparently, since then. Again, they're still only 18, 19 years old. Oh, my two God, chicks, really? Yeah, two oh, chicks shit. from, I want to say, the UK or something like that. Okay. Um, and they just do this, like, weird, like, indie art pop, like... It's kind of grimy, but then it kind of has some weird touchy, like... Do you mean... Modern pop? Uh, sorry. As soon as you said art pop, I immediately went to Grimes, and you were like, kind of grimy, and yeah, I was like, yeah. do you mean grimy? Well, kind or, of, okay. right? Like, it is, yeah. That's definitely what it reminds me yeah, of. Yeah, it's um, got this weird industrial production value to it, but yeah. then also has just your basic, like... Like, it, the hints of it. There's yes. no full-on, like, this is pure pop music, but... You know, the melodies and some of the yeah, synth no, is I like... Mean, definitely what they're going for is their brand of pop music. Right. Like, they want it to be catchy and hook-focused, right? Right. But the... Obviously, like you said, the production is, like, totally left field, which is what I was super stoked for. Yeah. Um, I, 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 mean, heard, I heard about them through... Um, Pitchfork actually uh, okay. gave them best new music. So oh, really? Like, oh, okay. Like, nice. I should check this out and mm-hmm. see, see what it's all about. Um, and I don't know how it was for you, uh, but the first four or five tracks I really, really liked. Yes. I was very into this. I was like, yes. this is cool. I could get down with this. And then it kind of falls off pretty hard. That's kind me. of exactly where I was too. Like okay. the opening track, which is just instrumental, yeah. really hooked me. It's yes. this, this dark, grimy, industrial, yeah, like, cool electro, intro like, too. Yeah. Stranger Things, like, yeah. synth track. Definitely gets you ready for, yeah. um, with and then hot it drops pink. into the hot it's pink, the, like, which is fucking which awesome. Which starts with that, so like, good. cool, like, synthy pop, like, mm-hmm. and then when it drops into the chorus, and it's just got that weird, metallic, like, industrial synth to it. And, and they it, do, um, like, the thing for me, I think, that kills the, the back half, but is so good on uh-huh. hot pink. Is the vocals? They do that like they're very, very British, um, but they do <laughs> that thing where it's like sometimes they devolve into like kind of talk singing yes. British thing. Yeah, and Hot Pink, it's great. Yeah, uh, they kind of just keep saying Hot Pink a lot, mm-hmm. uh, and it's the two girls, or sisters, friends, no? friends. Okay, yes. um, they kind of just repeat each other, and it right. sounds great. Yeah, but like later on in the track list, um, I know you like Snakes and Ladders, but like. Snakes and Ladders was like kind okay. of the tipping point for uh-huh. me. Um, like the weird rapping 
uh, that it yeah. comes in like towards the end of the track. I uh-huh. just felt was kind of awkward uh, and kind of just drilled home that like we're British. <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> no, no, what that was your Don't, worry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Who's who's in here? That was weird. It's a ghost. Uh, um, but yeah. Um, yeah. So and, uh, yeah, it does. The second half definitely falls off, and they've got some. I want to say like some super long songs too, which is just that's weird. kind of what killed it. for yeah. me. it was like cool and collected. I think it's like seven minutes. Yeah, and then Donnie Darko is eleven like, minutes. Is it eleven? Yeah, and it's like, uh, I, sir, not, Donnie Darko has a ninety-minute runtime. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, very good movie. Go back to China. Um, Whoa, <laughs> it's from the movie. It's not a weird racist thing. Um, <laughs> but the, those yeah those two tracks yeah, definitely kind of the nail in the coffin i was like i'm ready for this album to which end. is why it's my new release and not my album of the week yeah. because it it definitely has some some touch that i really really liked about it and i i'm willing to hang on to that and hope that like mm-hmm. they really grow with that and i mean again, I, they're yeah. teenagers like definitely. they can do so much more as they, like, absolutely keep on it's growing very like, wild that so, they are releasing stuff yeah like this. i mean hot pink and snakes and ladder two of my favorites falling into me um probably has it's probably my favorite track i love the, falling into the chorus yes. like on that it's yep. just like uh, yeah yeah straight ahead pop tune falling yeah. into me uh, mm-hmm. it really showcases their style yes I think. if they so stuck if you with one something thing, like yeah mm. definitely listen to falling into me um and like we said they kind of sound like grimes like yeah grimes the, is a really yeah. good one that i didn't include um I, the there's sex i guess you could say kind of like in quieter moment she sounds a lot like yeah Rami from okay. the XX. fair enough fair um, enough kind of reminds me of charlie xax uh, yeah i mean that only just for the weird like british pop, pop right mm-hmm. um and then i put sophie i don't know mm-hmm. if you're familiar with sophie yeah um but kind of that yeah definitely that production style sure. not necessarily vocally but mm-hmm. uh production very similar did she produce something on it probably she may have produced hot pink i'm not sure um or one of them you should you should confirm <laughs> okay let me not be mad let, me, let you, me not yeah. be mad um but uh while you're correcting yourself um mr paul oh, hey. talk about uh your new release yeah so this is a little begrudging but i went with the new release from echo courts room with a view so i want to say it's you know it's kind of all right with a few gems in there yeah but i'm trying to think of what's less valuable than a gem maybe <laughs> where did you find this I just always just kind search. of rifling. Yeah, I'm always around. just looking. I try to look at literally everything that okay. is released. Sure, and I don't know. I I'm a big proponent of when I make picks. It's not always about necessarily how good the album is. Sure, it's kind of where you are mentally and how it affects you absolutely. at the time. Absolutely. So, which I, I can definitely get behind with this album. Right. Yeah. It, you know, there are parts I really like, and that's why it's my new release as opposed to album of the week. They're they're are three tracks that I felt were pretty strong. Yeah. And then other than that, I, I'm not sure I would actually recommend it. Yeah, it's kind of an indie folk sound. Right? Yeah, it's or, just... They do... They have this, like... I don't want to call it doo-wop, but it's it's got that kind of shuffle to it that is very, like, endemic to, like, 40s and 50s pop music, like mm-hmm. older pop music. Yeah, and I think that that harmonizing is the one thing that kind of sets sure. it a little bit apart from that scene. Yeah. So I, I can see where you come from on that. Yeah. But uh, it's, it, it is certainly okay. It definitely, like, I also agree. It, it just didn't blow me away. It's like, eh, this is... Exactly. It's a good summer, like, you know, windows open kind of music. That's but. exactly what I pictured, like... It's just like some breezy, beachy, like shoegaze, yes. and like you could almost just like picture yourself like drinking a beer, like at the beach, yes. right? And just like happening in the background, like a and, much less interesting version of uh, Rolling Blackouts, Coastal Fever. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yes. it's and it's kind of like what, what, what of. you guys often describe as beach music. I I think of as like road trip music. Yeah. Sure, same concept. Yes. Right, right, absolutely. But um, I would say, if nothing else, just check out Strawberry Pie, Room with a View, which is the you know title album title. And then uh, Tail Lights is the one that sounds like Knock on yes. Heaven's Door. Yes. <laughs> it, it really, does. really does. It is, it is insane how much, like, I was listening to it. Where's in that lawsuit? My, yeah, right? I was listening to it in my office today, and I just kept singing. Like, as soon as the song was over, I was like, well, now I have to listen to Knock on Heaven's Door, or else I won't be able to get mm-hmm. it out of my head. It's, it's kind of wild. Does that help, listening to the thing that's stuck in your head? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it helps. But I also kind of wanted to listen to that song, because it's a good song. So, Which it's, version? Um, 
I actually don't mind the Guns N' Roses version, um, but the Bob Dylan version is pretty good. Really? You, yeah. who shit on Guns N' Roses, you <laughs> I gotta know. go there now instead it's, of now it's, Clapton. It's permanent. I don't know if I've heard the Clapton version. Oh, you never, like, listen to the radio on a long car drive? <laughs> uh, no, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, yeah. Anyway. It's good. Uh, yeah, I need to say things with confidence more often. Mm-hmm. She did produce Hot Pink. She did. She did. Thank Hell you. Hell yeah! Thank, the best Thank you. The best track. That's great. Um, okay, uh, for my new release, um, and this is, I struggled with the concept of having two albums of the week um, because this album was just that good to me. Um, but I wanted to to stick to the confines of the podcast, and it also is. Not really a new album, but kind of. <laughs> um, so my new release is uh, In Both Directions, mm-hmm. or something like that. The Lost Album by John Coltrane. Uh, kind of set the world on fire the last couple of weeks. Um, and honest, honestly, like I am not as up to snuff on my classical jazz as I should be. Um, so, I mean, I'm familiar with the classics and everything. But this just kind of just fits right into that kind of history and it just the album is just so good so it's two it's a double album uh the first disc is the actual intended album itself and the the second disc is just kind of extra takes of some of the earlier tracks um and the the wildest thing to me is that this was recorded during coltrane's heyday uh and they the master tape was destroyed by his record label to cut down on storage space. (laughs) Like, I know that like, it's probably like, they don't like put a sticker on it. That's like John Coltrane lost album. Don't delete or don't remove (laughs) or whatever. But like just the gall of like that statement, like Mm -hmm. you fucking thrown away one of the greatest artists of all time, just a random tape, you know? Um, I don't want to derail the point you're making, but you know, it it brings up a bigger conversation about in this era of digital music preserving those down the road. Absolutely. It's the same thing that people that are into video games are going yes. through now. Absolutely. No, I it's it's a very important thing. Like music preservation is, is an interesting like topic that I wish I knew more about, um, for sure. But they so they threw away the master, um, but thankfully uh, the guy who, either the engineer or the guy who helped record it, sent a copy home with John Coltrane so he could listen to it at home. And John gave it to his wife, or his ex-wife, uh, and she held on to it. Um, so they were putting it up for sale in wow. just a big auction. And the record company was like, no, I'll take that back. Like, <laughs> I would like to sell that, please. Um, Do you know if it's something that he had planned to release at some point? He did. Um, I don't know. It wasn't clear of the, like the circumstances of like why it was lost and like it just never came out. Especially considering it was during his like peak recording period. You know, to me, with these posthumous releases, that's the biggest factor. Right. Is like we've seen what they did with the Hendrix estate, and yes. they just go and they pull out all the shit he never intended to release. Exactly. Right. Exactly. exactly. But this sounds like. Something and, that was very well put together. Yes, and based on my uh, my most recent listening experience, the first disc feels like a complete experience, um, and it really is. It, it's a marvel to me that um, the production is as good as it is, and I'm not sure. It probably could have been remastered. It probably was digitally, um, but the fact that like this sounds like it could could have come out yesterday yeah. is just amazing to mm-hmm. me and the just the very loose feel of it like some of the tracks don't even don't even have names and some of them are like take three or like take five right. like just the fact that like they were in the studio banging this stuff out every day every night and like <laughs> decided that like take five like the, his solo on take five was like just a little bit better than like take four or like they did like a different drum break and just it if you like anything related to jazz, like do yourself a favor and check this out. It is it is incredible. Like it is so 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 good. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, uh, favorite tracks are Untitled Original Eleven Three Eighty Six, 
uh, Untitled Original 11 383 uh, and Impressions. Um, it's like a Bach album. Yeah, right? <laughs> BWV 1034. Um, I don't need to say related artists. Everybody knows who's, you know, yeah. in that circle. Um, but yeah, uh, with that, let's jump into Album of the Week. And Mr. Billy, up first. Yes. Head over heels. Head over heels by Chromio. I, they're back. Yeah, how uh, long has it been? Ah, uh, I mean, it's probably been three, three, four years. Okay, maybe. Okay, that three, factors into years. a yeah. question we haven't talked that about I them have. on this podcast. Chromio, no. Didn't they have a single a couple months ago? Maybe. No. <laughs> okay. Man, I Did may they? Have, I I, I might have said else I, I may have it. said something that sounded like them. I'm not sure. Yeah, oh, maybe. Okay. Maybe that's what it maybe? was. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, if you haven't heard of Chromio, they're just this uh, Canadian duo uh, that uh, just hits electro funk so hard <laughs> that nobody else can try it. Gonna, like, they 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 are that genre. I was like, gonna nobody say, else. Everybody can else do... give up. That yeah, was part everybody... of my questioning. Yeah. for for your. I mean, granted, I mean, just their style of music is done so perfectly that I, I it's hard to even compare it to anything it, um it is a as much as like i wasn't a gigantic fan but like it is a master class really? in like the this genre of music yeah like this is a touchstone for anyone who wants to be into electro funk or likes electro funk like they will have to come to this album and see what's going on yeah i uh... This is probably their most well put together album that they've put out, in my opinion. They've put out oh, about okay. four or five albums, and and they they've stuck to their style. They do it well, and they have really cool like hip hop features on this, which yes. I don't think they've done much of in the past. But it fits perfectly on this. Yes, there's not a song on this album that I dislike. I kind of wish that there was more. Really? Yeah, like uh, like more features, like more. Different hip hop features, I think, would be cool. I, uh, <laughs> so maybe that's getting out of the the true. I, I, right, I don't want to don't want them to get too sure, far away sure. from what they do because they they love what they do, and I mean, their names are like Dave One and like P Thug. Like they're not like two like <laughs> yes. nerdy like white dudes yes. that are like doing like electro funk. Like they're just like two dudes that just love this style of music. Absolutely, that have embraced it and have done it so well, and they've got I. From what I would gather, they've gotten a really good, solid, like, career following out of it. I mean, if they can pull these kind of features, Absolutely. they've got, what, like, This Dram, album's been, like, got... looking for... Like, I've heard people talk about looking forward to this album for what feels like at least a year or two. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I just... I know that people love them a lot. Yeah, and the... because it's a style that's not mainstream. Like, this is the it's kind really of not. music I love, Which but is... this is the kind of music I get made fun of Which for loving. It's weird to me that like, it's not mainstream, because this is... Yeah. This is uptown funk. Like that's that's, that's what I've always what that's what I've is. said about all this. The people like, that I don't know have been really excited about it too. It's kind of like remember when D'Angelo came back? Right, and everyone was anticipating yeah. it. Like, oh come yeah. on, man! After all these years, hell yeah. So it's weird to me that you get made fun of for liking this because this <laughs> seems like I'm so surprised that this isn't on the radio. Like, uh, what what the the song with Ram is yeah. like fucking tailor made for the radio uh, right like it yeah. is nuts that's i mean and that's that's i mean i'll say that's, that's how why I feel, you get made fun of that's how i feel about most of the electronic music i listen to i feel like it's you know it's kind of this shit should for, be on the radio yeah. aren't they popular <laughs> yeah but um wait that's what he gets made fun of for <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely I, just let, uh, let yourself believe that that's fine yeah i uh, <laughs> listens to chromio sounds very similar to top knot <laughs> oh nice oh Got me. Like it. Deep cuts. Um, but yeah, so I, I I don't know what I. It's hard for me to put it into words because it's the production is so precise, the instrumentation is so good. It's such a good balance of analog and synth instrumentation on top of live yeah. instrumentation. P Thug, what he does is he plays the th- the synth, but he has the. Um, Whatever the vocal oh, uh, vocalizer yes. is, yeah, I don't know what it's called. The little uh, the, guitar thing that he uses with the uh, keyboard, uh, talk, talk box, or a vocal yeah, or talk, box. talk box, yeah, okay. talk box, yeah. yeah, he uses the talk box with the synth, yes. ah, and cool. it's so good, and yes. that's like, and, and so, like speaking as someone who, like, I, I'm just not 
a huge fan of the genre. Like, it's just not something that I would listen to. Fair. And, like, I think not it, fair, but fine. <laughs> I think it totally is. Like, I'm surprised that more people don't listen to this stuff because, like, anyone like I don't. I hate to even call it like electronic music because I feel like that could turn somebody away that yeah. like just wouldn't normally listen to this but would absolutely love it. Yeah, because it's right. so catchy and it's yeah. like it's stupid and fun and like there's just nothing there's nothing bad about it right i just it's just not my thing yeah and i don't know i I get like you said like i guess people do like it i get conflicted because it's never been popular when i talk about it but i guess people do like it and they they just came by 9 30 club sold out two nights at 9 30 so it's not like they're unlike right right but i could also see them playing the anthem or a a massive venue like that because i mean they could fill a room like that with that sound. I mean, yes. they could create a huge dance party with the sound that they have, yeah. and and people would love it. I don't know. Maybe you're just uh, talking to people with poor taste. <laughs> maybe it's strange. Maybe right I'm now. just yeah, yeah. Probably. Mm. I'd. I'm not going to argue that. So I'm surprised you guys didn't like it more. Well, I don't know about Paul. I think Did we've you? just we've been saying good things about it for the past five minutes. Oh, I just <laughs> I haven't said a bad thing about it. I just said that I didn't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> or, sorry, sorry. That's that that's exactly what that you came said. Out wrong. That came out wrong. I, I said it was shit. I didn't say anything bad about it. I said it was shit. <laughs> what I what sorry. What I meant to say was that it's just not for me. It's <laughs> I just don't really like. I don't really like electrofunk all that much. That's just me. That's that's okay. all. That's all that I have to say. Okay. I think I thought it was. It's a it's a good example of electrofunk. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you this. So political. It is one of those genres where you say it and then you see someone's eyes gloss over. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Like, oh, this guy. Yeah. And so maybe I just, yeah, I don't know. But uh, some of my favorite tracks, uh, Don't Sleep featuring French Montana, like another mm-hmm. random feature. Uh, one Track Mind is where they kind of slow it down a little bit. It just has a really, like, sexy, like, guitar. Um, and then Bedroom Calling Part 2 featuring The Dream. <laughs> I mean, I, I get why I made Tracks fun of. I get it. I get it. Real dumb. <laughs> I get. I get it. Okay. Yeah, There's right. blood in the water. Also, I these quit. related artists have insane names. What did I put down for related? Cut copy. Yeah. Uh, Penguin I, Prison. Yeah. Who in prisons penguins? Have you not listened to Penguin Prison? No. Oh my why god. Why would I listen to a band called Penguin Prison? They're so good. And Miami Horror. Yes, another great band. <laughs> Yeah. Are these all yeah. electrofunk? No. Okay. There's nothing They're, wrong with any okay. of those titles. They're like synth pop. Okay. You would, don't probably wouldn't like it. You. <laughs> it's not my. Thing. I want you. I want you to know. I don't hate it. I never said that I hated it. Don't don't get uh, upset. You sound like me. Just don't like get, it's yeah, not for me. Fuck you. It's whatever. fine. You're it's both just so not nice. for me. <laughs> I'm sure they're talented. <laughs> oh God. I. Did, but, other nope. people can like I'm garbage. Done. It's nope. fine. Nope. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not entertaining this conversation. I'm going to show you everything that I have ever listened to tonight after Good. this podcast. Perfect. Love it. Um, up next is my pick, um, "Eflores" by Covet. Uh, we heard uh, "Shibuya" uh, the last time we recorded, featuring uh, Mr. San Holo, um, and I was very, very excited uh, for this album based on that one track and can report back that I still really, really like it. Um, I think my only complaint is that it's a little too short. Um, it kind of feels like an EP. I, I mean, thought it was, is it not an EP? It's like, and maybe it's it six is. six songs, right? I don't know what the the parameters That's are true. for that shit nowadays. Because it's, it's six songs, 30 minutes-ish. Is it um, really? Yeah. Uh, and the, it really flies. Like, mm-hmm. the... Everything is just super, um, in, in an age of me having to be overly concerned about the lyrics of things, it's nice to just put on an album and not have to worry about like thinking about it. Like there are no not lyrics. that it's, yeah, not that, yeah, not that it's mindless, but it's just so good and kind of just grab, grabbed a hold of me in a way that I wasn't expecting. Um, it's just gorgeously produced and the, I think it's just three of them. It's um, obviously minus features, but it's uh, guitar, bass, and drums. And just the way that the three of them are in lockstep at all times is just a, a feat to the genre itself. Um, it's a math rock album, if I didn't say that earlier. Um, and it's just, just really good guitar lines and really shows you 
how diverse the instrument is um, and how many cool things you can do with it. Um, a lot of cool soundscapes on this thing. Uh, track Glimmer just kind of sounds like you're underwater. Um, the Obviously, Shibuya is just this really cool, like, unfurling, kind of marching uh, math rock tune that just excellent. It's a very, very good album. Um, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure when we listened to Shibuya if it was going to be like a one off track, like a kind right. of like instrumental, like single, like kind of like just an experiment type yeah. deal. The entire album falls into that theme. And yeah. It's all done really well. Yeah, it's, it's not very the cohesive. same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. cohesive, but it's not repetitive either. Absolutely. Like, it, it's done really well. It's produced really well. I, I wonder if San Holo had more to do with the production on the album. That would be interesting because to it see. Because is, it is produced extremely well. It is. Uh, surprising. Because, like, I'm so used to um, listening to, like, indie math rock and, like, the production is usually pretty bad. Yeah. Um, or, like, self-produced. And it's just right, like, exactly. yeah, this is lo-fi. Like, mm-hmm. it's fine. But, like, this just feels... Uh, this I think this is their sophomore album, maybe their third album. Um, and it just feels so polished um, in a way that is to get those guitar tones to record that Absolutely. beautifully is insane. And it I don't think there's any overdubbing unless there's like a there's one there's one song that has the guitarist from uh, the band Sean on it, right? Mario Camarena. Um, but I don't think any of the other tracks have overdubbed guitars I don't on think them. So. It's just. Yeah. All three of them playing, probably not live together, but at least, you know, one by one. Mm -hmm. Um, So, good shit. Uh, Favorite tracks, Shibuya, Glimmer, and Falcor. Uh, Related artists are TTNG, uh, formerly known as This Town Needs Guns, a band called Enemies, and Delta Sleep. Uh, And yeah, Mr. Paul. I like This Town Needs Guns. (laughs) Me too. Me too. So, this week, I was excited... Um, I love this album title. Yeah, Jealous of the Birds, artist from the UK, kind of up-and-coming pop artist in my eyes. She released a tight little five-song EP, and I'm looking forward to discussing this one with you, Jordan. Not Billy. Wow. No, I'll just leave. It's cool. <laughs> it's, you, dude, it's not electrofunk. I don't know if yeah, you're <laughs> I, I quit. <laughs> yeah, because you would specifically mention this track, Plastic Skeletons. I, I think we went opposite directions on this. Yes. When I heard this this first track... I really love the tight rhythm section. It really grooves, and I like the energy of it. The only way it could be better for me is if the whole EP was that vibe. I really I picked it because I liked everything else on there, but nothing else has quite the same sound. After that, it kind of calms down mm-hmm. into a real kind of like, I don't know, indie pop, husky, yeah, breathy kind of singing. Yes. And then the focus kind of shifts more to the imagery and the lyrics and... Really cool stuff. Yeah. I liked it. Um, but yeah, the album is called... Let me take a deep breath so I don't run out of air. Yeah. The Moths of One What breath. I Want Will Eat Me in My Sleep. I love it. Yeah. I'm very, it's very evocative. I like it. Indeed. Um, yeah. I, I ended up... Um, I, I like the whole thing, front to back. Um, but I liked Tribble and Bohemia a lot more than Plastic Skeletons. I think because it was a little poppier. And, like, a little more different uh, you know, instrumentally. I can't remember if it's that one or Tonight I Feel Like Kafka that all of a sudden ends in this 8-bit sounding outro. That's Tonight I Feel Like Kafka, okay. which really I fucking love. Really tweaked my ear. I love this. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I'm the exact opposite of you in that I wish everything sounded like Tonight I Feel Like Kafka. You would, you emo. <laughs> I would draw it on this video. <laughs> of course you are. Um, fucking neckbeards. I, the, just the... The whole track overall, I liked a lot more than everything else on here. Um, like the 8 bit synths were a really cool touch. Um, very, very simple, quiet acoustic, like mixed perfect, purposely quiet, uh, which I thought was really interesting. I, and just the chord progression was really cool. Um, I thought it was neat. But yeah, shit's, it's really cool. It's a neat little like teaser do you know if she has something else on the way or if this is just like she's been working on actually i don't okay but i'm definitely going to keep an eye on yeah. her releases from now on absolutely I'm, I'm pretty new to her and i now i'm going to kind of go to the back catalog see yeah. if it's anything like this yeah um i i picked three tracks out plastic skeletons that kind of has that higher energy feel trouble in bohemia that i think we all agree mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. and then tonight i feel like kafka 
But it's a five song EP. Every track is solid. You might as well listen to the whole thing in one sitting. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's uh, that'll do it. That's all she wrote. A lot in one month. Um, yeah, it was. I was a whirlwind. Uh, a pretty quick whirlwind. Um, we shouldn't but, take uh, vacations anymore. I know, right? I just need to do this hobby as a thing I enjoy for full time while I also work. Yeah, that's yeah. Be, I'm glad you understand. That. Yeah, absolutely. If you're curious about the singles and albums we talked about today, there will be a playlist up on the website. That's bliss.house, bliss.haus, containing all the singles and the best tracks from this week's albums. Um, that playlist will also be on our Spotify profile with all of our other playlists, um, which we've messed quite a, a, a bit um, at this point. A lot of good stuff on there. Um, definitely some more posts going up soon. Uh, like I said, we just got back from vacation, most of us. Um, so been very, very busy uh, trying to catch up everywhere else. Uh, check us out on all the places like subscribe, check, you know, everything uh, wherever fine podcasts are to be found. Um, and one last time, visit bliss.house, bliss.haus for more content. Thanks, everybody, for, for coming today. Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> point point reached. <laughs>